coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Bank and Pam, man. I appreciate the love. Bam, 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 boom. Ooh, I almost hit that song that time. He thinks, hey, it might, I don't know. I thought I had total control, man, but I ain't used me so long. Ain't no telling, man. Ain't no telling. Um, I appreciate the support, man. Big love to everybody out there in TBP Nation, man. Everybody who been holding me down. Everybody who been rocking with me. Everybody who support this movement, everybody who have been in the morning muds, everybody who have been over there to Twitch, everybody who have watched these interviews that I did on other platforms. If you haven't seen them, please go re uh, visit them and uh, support them. Um, you know that's what help us get out. That's what help us get out there on other platforms, man. Check out the Vlad interview. Uh, check out the No Jumper interview. Check out the Kirk Bone interview. Uh, check out the interview I did with uh, Freeway Ricky Ross. Check out the interviews we did and Living Life After Life podcast with, you know, the likes of uh, 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 Pusha T and, you know, other dudes and comedians and other rappers, Young Mo. Man, you know, we've been working, man. We've been working trying to get this message out there, man. So everybody who have supported that, man, and support me moving forward, man, big love to each and every one of y'all, man. It definitely helps. I definitely appreciate it. And big love to everybody who leave comments, man, and um, like the videos, man. Um, didn't know at first how important it was, but it's very important, man. It's very important. So if you really support, man, make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you like the video. And when I say leave comments, that don't mean like in the live chat when, you know, be going back and forth. They don't count as comments. I didn't know that neither. You have to go after the video and leave a comment, actually. So, big love to everybody who support that. Um, and like I said, the comments, man, I listen, man. You talk to me, man. I talk back. And um, somebody brought this up in one of the comments, either in a live or either on my video. But... I had wrote it down, so when I sit down here just now to make this video, I didn't know what I was going to make it about when I went and sat down. I seen it written down, so I just started thinking about it. So, I'm going to try to, you know, talk about that off the top of my head, but I do know some people like that. Somebody asked me, did I ever know any officers, COs, that was, uh, you know, addicted or got strung out on drugs? I do. <laughs> In fact, I do. And, you know, I don't know how you might consider it or whether you would say you strung out on drugs or whatever. I mean, both of them, some of them, the one I'm thinking about first or the first thing that came to my mind was, man, um, I can remember, man, this was probably in the, uh, oh, man, not, yeah, this was in the 2000s. This was in the 2000s, but it was in the early 2000s, I believe. Early 2000, no, maybe the 90s, man. This might have been in the 90s, the 90s run. I can't be for sure because I was on Greensville so many times, three times. But I do know. I can remember one time, man. I don't know if the price of uh, weed uh, was uh, super high on the street or whatever it was. But I can remember, man, back in this time right here, it was quite a few officers, man, that were... Uh, you know, do do some stuff for you, man, for some weed, man, for weed. And I'm saying to myself, in my logical thinking, I'm like, man, y'all out here where the weed at, and y'all coming in prison and doing stuff for weed or bringing stuff in prison to get weed. That was just like weird to me. I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my brain around the concept of that, or either like it was just that hard to get weed. On the street. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when dudes get COs to bring them weed in on the street, they also send that CO to the person to get the weed. So my thinking is maybe they didn't have a weed person or they didn't have somebody they could cop weed from or either they didn't have somebody that they could cop quality weed from. But I know for a fact, man, it was a couple of uh, females at that. And a couple of dudes, but a couple of females I remember the most that was around 
me at that time. And there was some dudes in there at the time that was getting weed. And I used to get my hands on a little piece of the weed at, at the same time. And you had certain females in there, they'll, they'll bring you stuff in and they want weed. You get them weed. <laughs> you get them weed, you know, right there in the penitentiary. And they was, they was taking that. I remember one time when I had my hair long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my hair long, man. So I used to get my hair braided up and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm boxing this stuff. So, you know, you know, when you're in that boxing frame of mind, man, you be wilding out. You be doing crazy stuff. So I was looking crazy. I wanted to look crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I used to wear it out a lot of times. I ain't, I won't even really, you know, comb it out because I ain't had no pick or nothing like that. But I used to go in the ring like that, you know, <laughs> hair going everywhere, looking like wild man joke, you know. So um, I can remember I wanted some picks. We could not get picks in prison, right? And dude had told me that the female, the certain female that was in the booth, man, you know, said, man, you know, she like that weed, man. You be having that weed. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't, I ain't really know how to approach because he told me she had bought him something and he had gave her some weed. So he said he would holler at her. So I, he hollered at her. She told him to tell me come holler at her. So I go holler at her and she was like, what you what you trying to get in? I told her I wanted a couple of, uh, a couple of picks. Something small, but it's illegal. You can't get it. You know, you get caught bringing anything in, you know, you lose your job, blah, blah, blah. She said it won't no problem, right? She said that ain't nothing. She said, I said, well, how much they cost? Because I was going to give her the money. She was like, um, oh, they ain't nothing about five, six dollars and stuff. Get you a couple of them. Man, they ain't, they don't cost that much. So uh, I said, all right, well, what you want? I said, you know, I, I, if it don't cost me five, six dollars, I'll give you 50 dollars to get it. She was like, um, you got some weed? They said you had a good weed. I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She said, um. Well, I'll I, I bring it tomorrow. Just, just give me some good weed. Give me some good weed. I said, okay. Get some weeds. Well, about, about five or six picks. So I got these picks and everything, man. Pick my hair out. Woo, woo, woo. All for some weed. And you can see them. I can see them. I ain't never got high. I can tell when people high. I can tell when people on that weed. I can tell. It's just something they look in their face and their eyes. I can tell. So... I used to see her, I know I used to see her in the booth smoking weed. Dudes told me she used to leave and go on her break and go in the bathroom and smoke weed. So she had a real bad weed habit. You know what I'm saying? Some of the dudes in there, they had some peoples, like boys and stuff, they used to buy weed from me and other dudes, take the weed, give it to the peoples, let the people take the weed to the girl in the booth, and she bring me. The, uh, the, the boys' extensions and stuff to go in their hair. <laughs> Even if she had to wear them in her hair and take them out to get them in. she give them extensions and stuff to go in their hair, man. Buying them, uh, bringing them in, women, panties, and all of this for weed. <laughs> for weed, man. You know what I'm saying? Real talk, true story, man. Real talk, true story, man. And you had dudes that was on there that was the same way. You know what I'm saying? Give them a little weed. They'll go over there to the uh, to the vending machine. Bring you back a real hamburger. One of them Angus beef hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? A cold soda. A soda that we can't get back there. A uh, different flavor of soda we can't get back there. Go over there. Bring you uh, them good old chips that they had in the vending machine, them potato skins and stuff, stuff we couldn't get back there, all for weed, <laughs> all for weed, man, I'm telling you, real, real talk, man, and I be like, I don't know, I be flabbergasted, man, because I'm saying to myself, like, weed must be real expensive on the street, or real hard to get, because these people take a chance for their job to get weed in the penitentiary. In the penitentiary, man, real talk. They were smoking that weed, man. They love that weed, man. And, you know, um, inmates, you know, the convicts, everybody love weed, man. Weed, it was a big, big commodity in there, man. You had a lot of officers smoke weed. You had some officers, they be walking around, they smell that weed. You know what I'm saying? They can smell it because dudes will be trying to, you know, cover the smell up by lighting incense and blowing the weed out the vent, doing all of that stuff. But you'll have, you'll have uh, 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 COs that'll walk by and they'll smell the weed and then they'll call the people. They be straight police. 
You had some CO they walk by and smell that weed. That weed smell good, like it's real, like it's real strong, like it's potent. It's some exotic or something. Man, they'll pull up on the door, man. The dudes be nervous, perfect till they heard Joker say, "Y'all got that weed here, man. Give me a little piece of that weed, man. Don't say nothing, man. But y'all gotta keep that smell down, man. Cause somebody else walk up in here, man. Y'all gonna get late, man. Man, give me a little piece of that weed, man. Give me something. Dudes are throwing something. He gone. <laughs> he gone. You know what I'm saying? He he, he good. You know what I'm saying? All for weed. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it's a double-edged sword, though, because, two, you will have them dudes that like that weed and stuff like that. I mean, I, I heard some girls do it, too, but most of the dudes. And they'll send somebody on the street to, to, to pick the package up. They're going to give them money, whatever. But them people will go in your sack, man. <laughs> them people will go in your sack, man, and that would cause a major, major, major... A, a confusion in the penitentiary because that thing might when I say sack I mean the package of weed that thing might go through so many hands you see what I'm saying boom you send somebody from you send the police to go get it the person who you tell them to go get it from on the street might have wrapped it up you know put it up packed it up a certain way now a lot of trickeration be going on too a lot of flim flam you know what I'm saying because you will say I'm paying the CO to bring the weed in right you know what I'm saying? Look, I'm going to pay you, man. Go pick it up. What is it? It ain't nothing but two ounces of weed. It's going to be compressed. It's going to be small. It's going to be wrapped up. You can get it in. All right, what you going to give me? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you this, right? Now, you done told him all oh, you getting is weed. Now, what some dudes will be doing, you know what I'm saying, to keep it a hundred, they'll pull that flim flam. They'll tell him, man, he picking up two ounces of weed, but they done slid some dope in there. They done slid a cell phone in there. You know what I'm saying? Or either or, or, or either or they done slid some crack in there. You know what I'm saying? They might be getting dope and weed, but they trying to pay for it just to do to bring a pack of weed or, 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 or two ounces of weed in. So then you have some officers, they'll be busting the joint open and going in it and rewrapping it. You see what I'm saying? But dudes are no because they already know what they got being sent in. So that was causing a lot of confusion. Then you had some COs. Bust the joint open and find out it, 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 you know you got dope in here. You ain't supposed to have dope in here. If I get caught with dope, it's a whole different thing than if I get caught with weed. So now they start spreading the word. Then you have police is scared to really bring stuff in, and then you justify the ones who will bring something in opening up your packs because they saying I gotta make sure you sending in what you say you sending in. But that gave them justification because a lot of them was just busting it open, pinching out of it, taking stuff out of it, rewrapping it, and sending it in. And it's not what a dude expected to get. You know what I'm saying? Dude might be getting that for somebody else. Might got a sale for it already. Dude might be getting that in and already know how he's going to break it down and already calculating up, calculating up the money that he's going to make off of. But you go in there, you take a quarter out, you take two quarters out, you done pinch that out, rewrap it, and act like ain't nobody been in it. Then the dude is going to be acting like, oh, no, it's a problem. Because then he's going to think there's people on the street lying to him. No, I sent you what I said I sent you. Well, that ain't what I got. CO said he ain't go in it. Uh, I mean, all of that is confused. Then you might get somebody might bring it in. The CO might bring it in, but that CO might work in another building than what you work in. But you might tell the CO, well, give it to Joe Blow. And Joe Blow will get it to me because you cool with Joe Blow. Okay, so now it done went through the people on the street who packed it. It done went through the CO. Now it went to Joe Blow and it got to you and it ain't what it's supposed to be. So who you blame? Joe Blow, the CO, or the person who sent it to you? That's how people get laid in the penitentiary. That's how that Bethlehem get to slinging. That's how people end up going to the upper room. That's how people end up going to the hospital. That's how people end up going to MCV. That's how dudes end up chasing COs down the boulevard with, with the Bethlehem. Because don't nobody know who did something, but somebody know something got done. It's, it, you know what I'm saying? It touches too many hands. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of dudes, man, for real, a lot of dudes in there, they have habits. You know what I'm saying? So they expect to get what they trying to pay for because they trying to, you know, ration that thing out. Look, I got this much to get high with and I got this much to make money with and I got this much to pay the people with and, and, and so on and so forth. So any, any, any subtraction from what they expect to get is already accounted for. It's already accounted for. They could only do two ounces. And then somebody went in and took half of it out. Man, man, you'd be surprised, man. Dudes have paid for two, three ounces to come in and got one. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and and and, and lose their mind as they should, as they should. But it happens. You know what I'm saying? It happens. And then you get them COs in there too. Don't get it twisted. They man, you be surprised, man. Them people who work there, man. Some of them be having dope habits. If they know a dude getting some dope and they can't get no dope and they be fending on the street and they ain't really got that money like that, they'll tell the dope dude, man, you got to connect. I go pick it up. They go pick it up and go in the dope. They'll go in the dope and use some of the dope and then send you half of what you supposed to have and say, that's all the man gave me. That's all he gave me. You know what I'm saying? So we got you beefing with the people on the street or messing your whole connect up. You got some dudes that go in that joint and replace the whole thing. Take good dope and put bad dope in there and say that's what your people gave them. You know what I'm saying? So it's flim flam going around all the way around the board when you in that game. But them jokers be getting high, man. They be getting high as gas, man. I'm telling you, you had COs be on the job high, man. <laughs> they be on the job high. Male and female be on the job high. Hey, they, they they be on the job high as well. As well, man. Man, I done seen COs in the booth nod. I mean, dope nod. If y'all know what a dope nod mean, they in the booth dope nod. You think like it's almost similar to the way you see people falling asleep and can't hold their head up. Only difference is... You know they're in a dope now because they scratching all the time. They always be scratching. They just be scratching and scratching, man. It's like, man, that don't be crazy, man. It be crazy, but they they have them, man. They have them, man. I know COs that done, you know, didn't even get fired. They done got put on work leave to go to rehab because they got dope habits. You know what I'm saying? They got dope habits. You know what I'm saying? And some, some of them got dope habits since they've been in the penitentiary. COs, dope habits since they've been in the penitentiary from moving them sacks and going in and trying it and end up getting dope habits. And end up getting dope habits, man. Real talk, dope habits. And a lot of them already had it, but some of them get it. You know what I'm saying? But it, it goes down like that in the penitentiary, man. It, it, it do, man. Them people, would, them people would do things for drugs no different than the people that's locked up would do things for drugs. You got to think everybody coming to work there, man, they fresh off the street. They human too. They got the same type of problems that everybody else got. They got the same type of drug problems that everybody else got. The only difference is they not locked up and they got a job. You know what I'm saying? They could be functional uh, dope fiends. They definitely, uh, man, shh, they definitely be weed smokers. And I think they supposed to take um like drug tests and stuff every now and then. But they know how to beat the drug test. You know what I'm saying? They know how to beat the drug test, man. They they work for the people who uh issue the drug tests out. <laughs> they know how to beat the drug test. I know for a fact I done ran man, I I I done ran into thousands of uh thousands, literally thousands of um uh weed smoking COs. Thousands of them, weed smoking COs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, alcoholic COs. You know, dope fiend COs. Crack smoking COs. I know COs that got caught smoking crack and they got locked up. <laughs> oh, such a thing come to work. Man, man, they got locked up, man. When? Over the weekend, man. Say, man, they were smoking crack. Yeah. It happens, man. It happens, man. We all human. We all flawed. We all go through changes, man. They just try to make it seem like... We the only ones because we locked up. We the only ones that, 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 that you know, do all of this uh, flim flammery and foolishness because we locked up. Now they be doing it too. They be doing it too. And like I say, most drugs can't get in prison. Not no bulk of drugs. Not the big bulks when dudes is really get. They can't come in there unless, unless, unless they got some type of assistance. Unless they got some type of assistance. You know what I'm saying? And dudes... Just bringing in that dope or bringing in them hard drugs like dope, coke, crack, and all that stuff like that. Man, them, them people ain't even just taking a chance on, you know, losing their job. They taking a chance on going to prison they sell. So that tells you right there that the money is great. You know what I'm saying? And then, like I say, you factor in a lot of them want to do it because it's an avenue for them to get drugs. And they'll replace drugs. Man, it's been so many times dudes and got hit up with the Bethlehem. 
fighting, heads bust open, everything because somebody, be it the CO, be it the, the, the person on the street, being is the homeboy to test the sack first, because somebody went in that sack, man. <laughs> somebody done went in that sack in transition. In trans, I'm telling you, in transition, man. COs and got chased there, man. COs and got chased. They don't replace sacks, man. You got some flim flam CO dudes. It was one dude, I think we, I was on Sussex, man. He was bringing in dudes' sacks and he was taking the whole sack. <laughs> he was taking the whole sack. He thought he was Debo. He was taking the whole sack. Now, whether or not he was getting high, dudes say he was getting high. I don't know. But he was taking dudes' whole sack and he was going from building to building. Look, man, you got somebody bringing to get that tone? I got you. Woo -woo. And dudes are pay him. For him to bring it in, and then all of a sudden he act like he got towed off, or he couldn't get it in, or he had to throw it away because they had the dogs up front or something. Like the sack gone, and he ain't trying to replace it. Man, shh, till he ran to the wrong one. <laughs> they won't go accept it because you're going to be in a tough position. What you going to do? You going to go at it with the Bethlehem? You going to put your hands on him? Either way, you going to court. You going to court. If you do not accept that as just a straight loss, and you feel like you got to have them, oh, you can rest assured you're going to court. you going to court and you're going to get some more time. And then what you going to say? What's your excuse? Why I do it? Oh, you took my side. You implicating yourself in a whole nother crime. You know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 conspiracy that had drugs brought into a, 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 a state institution. <laughs> so, you know, these are all the chances the dudes got to take, man. They got to take to make some money or to feed their own habit. These are the, ch the, 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 the chances that you have to take. All of the above, man. People going in your sack. People pinching your sack. People just taking the whole sack. Uh, it, people, you know, replacing your drugs with fake drugs. All of that. All of that just to make that money, man. <laughs> or just to feed that habit. It's a whole lot of lossing, man. A whole lot of flat. It's not as easy as it seems. It's not as cut and dry as people might make it look on TV or this, that, or the third. But make no mistake about it. A lot of them dudes, like I say, they feel like they ain't going home. A lot of them dudes got a, a X amount of time. And a lot of them dudes just go off of principles, man. You're not going to take my stuff. So whether it's a CO uh, uh, another convict or what they gonna come get you man if you mess with their money if you mess with their sack if you mess with them drugs they gonna hurt you man <laughs> they gonna hurt you man straight up and I'm telling you man I done seen dudes catch some, some serious time man mean case man for putting that Bethlehem in the CO and a lot of people believe he did it because CO was disrespecting I know different <laughs> he did it because that CO took that sack. You see what I'm saying? That's just the narrative that's going to be painted from the people on the outside looking in. Because this in particular CO was nasty out of his mouth anyway. But little do people know he was bringing that sack in. You know what I'm saying? And he and he was you know, he was deboing people with that sack. So, you never know, man. You know, when the drugs come into play, man, everybody can be twisted. Everybody can be manipulated. And everybody, man, um, I don't think nobody's on the hundred up and up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody trying to make money. Everybody trying to feed their own agenda. Everybody trying to feed their own habit. So it's a dangerous game. It's, it's, it's a dangerous game, man. You know, a lot of people get hurt behind that joint, man. But it goes on every day. And I'm quite sure it goes on every day in every prison in the United States of America and abroad. <laughs> you understand? Because... Like I say, man, it's supply and demand. A lot of people want it, a lot of people need it, and, and it's got to be a way to get it. There's no other way that they gonna, um, you know, that they gonna function without trying to get it. You know, they go through their whole daily routine. You got dudes in prison that don't do nothing, nothing besides trying to get high, be tra besides trying to get that sack in. Nothing. That is their number one objective each and every day when they wake up. Is to try to get that sack in, man. And to either to make money or to get high. You know, and you got COs that come in there every day too. And they know you got drugs. And they, you know, you got COs who will shake you down and find drugs and keep them. What you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? You going to complain and get a case? What you going to do? They, I, I know COs that them told dudes and came in there saying, according to what the drugs say, 
put it in their pad, be like, what you doing? You want me to tell the people you got it? I'm going to take it, man. I'm just going to take it, man. And you you good. You ain't got no case. Man, go ahead, man. Go ahead, man. Get up and say, he going to take it. <laughs> he going to take it. But you don't want that case. You don't want that case. You know what I'm saying? But then that CEO walking around you. You know what I'm saying? So you still, what, what case you want? You want the drug case or you want the assault case or you want to let it go? What you going to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? If you in the game, all this is part of the game. You just got to decide what, what position you're going to play in the game. Because it's, it's, it's a deep game, man. It's a deep game, man. You got to set your own rules, man. But it's a deep game, man. And it's a lot of, lot, of, lot of, you know, cutthroat in this game right here, man. A lot of cutthroat in this game right here. Because it's all about money. And it's the same way on the street. It's all about money. There's a lot of cutthroat involved in it, man. But yeah, man, um... I definitely knew some COs who, who who got high, man. I definitely knew some. I knew some nodders. I knew some smokers. <laughs> Crack. <laughs> Dope. Yeah. Uh, weed. They do it all, man. They do it all. On both sides. Yeah, most definitely. But anyway, man. Just wanted to talk about that because somebody said something about that in the comment, man. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I hope y'all got some questions. Talk to me in the comments. I hope y'all can spark another video. Talk to me in the comments. I talk back, man. But, you know, like I say, it's a blessing in every lesson, man. And the blessing is, man, uh, I never had, you know, them, them type of um, problems, man. Even when I, you know, had my hands on some drugs and tried to sell them, I ain't never had nobody try to, you know, go in my stuff or, you know, take it or replace it or nothing like that. And I pray to God, I, 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 I'm thankful to God that I didn't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I did because I would have been one of the other percent that I just couldn't I wouldn't have been able to let that go I know I wouldn't have been able to let it go so I'm thankful that I never had to deal with those type of situations man and unfortunate that I didn't and um you know I got through the situation that I got through man you know uh you know with God on my side man but trust me a lot of dudes and got twisted up behind that very same scenario that I just told you about trying to get some and it go wrong, and they got to make a move, and it costs, you know what I'm saying, lose-lose, as I tell y'all all the time, the penitentiary is a lose-lose game, there are no winners in the penitentiary, only losers, sad, but true, so, stay out the penitentiary, man, win in life, man, win in freedom, you can't win in the prison, man, you just can't win, you know, you can only survive, if you're lucky, so, Y'all be safe, be smart, make good decisions, man. I'll see y'all in the morning mud. I'll see y'all on Twitch at nighttime. Pins on when you want to mess with me, if you want to mess with me. But if you don't, big love anyway from TBP Nation, man. And boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, man. They out there. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.